Chapter 16 A roaring wave of fear swept through the greatest city in the world as Monday was dawning. By midday, all the trains were filled and people were fighting savagely for standing room. By three o'clock, people were being trampled and crushed all around Liverpool Street Station. Revolvers were fired. People stabbed. Exhausted and infuriated policemen were breaking the heads of the people they were called out to protect. The ever-growing crowd moved away from the stations and along the northward running roads. Meanwhile, a cloud of slowly sinking black vapour drifted along the Thames, cutting off all escape over the bridges in its sluggish advance. After failing to get aboard a northwestern train at Chalk Farm, my brother came across a crowd looting a cycle shop. He grabbed a bicycle and cycled down Bellsize Road. He was passed by a number of cyclists, some horsemen and two motor cars. A mile from Edgware, the rim of the wheel broke and the machine became unrideable. He left it by the roadside and trudged through the village. There were shops half opened in the main street of the place. People crowded on the pavement and in the doorways and windows. They were staring, astonished, at this extraordinary procession of fugitives that was beginning. With a vague idea of making his way to friends in Chelmsford, my brother eventually started walking down a quiet lane running eastward. He saw few fugitives until, in a grass lane towards High Barnet, he happened upon two ladies. He came upon them just in time to save them. He heard their screams and hurried round the corner. A couple of men were struggling to drag the ladies out of the little pony chase in which they had been driving. A third man was trying to hold the frightened pony's head. A short woman dressed in white was screaming. The other lady, a dark slender figure, was fighting back. She slashed at the man who gripped her arm with a whip she held in her free hand. My brother immediately grasped the situation. Shouting, he hurried towards the struggle. One of the men desisted and turned towards him. My brother saw that a fight was unavoidable. Luckily, he is an excellent boxer. A punch sent the first man down against the wheel of the chase. He heard the clatter of hooves and the whip stung across his face. The man he held wrenched himself free and made off down the lane. Partly stunned, my brother became aware that the pony chase was moving away, swaving from side to side and with the women in it, looking back. He turned and ran after it. The sturdy man was close behind him and the third man further back. Suddenly, he stumbled and fell. My brother rose to his feet to find himself with a couple of antagonists again. He would have had little chance against them had not the slender lady very pluckily pulled up and returned to his help. It seems she had a revolver all this time, but it had been under the seat when she and her companion were attacked. She fired at six yards distance, narrowly missing my brother. The robbers ran off. That's how my brother found himself with a cut mouth, a bruised jaw and blood-stained knuckles driving along an unknown lane with these two women. He learned they were the wife and the younger sister of a surgeon living at Stanmore. My brother promised to stay with the ladies, at least until they could determine what to do. We have money, said the slender woman. So have I, said my brother. I think we should head for Harwich. We can get a ferry from there to escape from the country altogether. So they went on towards Barnet, my brother leading the pony to save it as much as possible. 
As the sun crept up the sky, the day became very hot, so that they only travelled very slowly. The hedges were grey with dust. And as they advanced towards Barnet, the sound of murmuring in the distance grew stronger. They began to meet more people. The noise grew louder, disorderly mingling of many voices, of many wheels, the creaking of wagons and the staccato of hooves. They followed the lane and saw they were less than 50 yards from the crossroads. Good heavens! On the main road was a dense crowd of horses, men and women on foot, and vehicles of every description. This boiling stream of people was rushing northward, one pressing on another. Way, my brother heard voices crying. Make way! The carts and carriages crowded close upon each other. Every now and then, one of these vehicles would speed up, sending the people scattering against the fences and gates of the villas. In one cart stood a blind man in the uniform of the Salvation Army, gesticulating with his crooked fingers and bawling, Eternity! Eternity! Long after, he was lost to sight in the dust. Some of the people who crowded, some quarrelled with other drivers. Some sat motionless, staring at nothing with miserable eyes. Some gnawed their hands with thirst. A huge timber wagon rumbled by, with its two near wheels splashed with fresh blood. Clear the way, cried the voices. Clear the way. There were sad, haggard women tramping by, well-dressed, with children that cried and stumbled, their dainty clothes smothered in dust, their weary faces smeared with tears. A little way down the lane, a little old man with a grey military moustache and a filthy black frock coat limped out. He removed his boot. His sock was blood-stained, shook out a pebble and hobbled on again. Then a little girl of eight or nine, all alone, threw herself under the hedge, close by my brother, weeping. I can't go on. I can't go on. My brother lifted the little girl up. Ellen! shrieked a woman in the crowd, with tears in her voice. Ellen! And the child suddenly darted away from my brother, crying, Mother! Out of the way there! bawled a coachman, turning his closed carriage into the lane. The horse and carriage forced the crowd back. A bearded, eagle-faced man dropped a bag he was clutching. It split, and a mass of gold coins struck the ground. They rolled hither and thither among the feet of men and horses. The man stopped and looked stupidly at the heap. A cab struck his shoulder and sent him reeling. He gave a shriek and dodged back. A cartwheel missed him narrowly. The man flung himself upon the heap of coins. He began thrusting handfuls in his pocket. The next moment, he was knocked down under the horse's hooves. Stop! screamed my brother. Pushing a woman out of his way, he tried to clutch the bit of the horse. Before he could get to it, he heard a scream under the wheels. He saw through the dust, the rim passing over the poor wretch's back. The driver of the cart slashed his wrist among his scattered money, unable to rise. Clutching the man's collar with his free hand, my brother lugged him sideways. But he still clutched after his money, hammering my brother's arm with a handful of gold. Go on, go on, shouted our angry voices behind. My brother looked up, and the man with the gold twisted his head round. He then bit the wrist that held his collar. A black horse came staggering sideways. A hoof missed my brother's foot by a hair's breadth. He released his grip on the fallen man, 
and jumped back. Anger changed to terror on the face of the poor wretch on the ground. In a moment, he was hidden as my brother was swept backward. The dusty body lay black and still, crushed under the rolling wheels. My brother saw the face of the dying man in the ditch, deadly white and drawn and shining with perspiration. <laughs>